Hey everybody, Sam here with a very spooky Halloween technical note. So while we were recording this episode, both Hank and our very special guest recorded using the wrong microphone. It sounds pretty good anyway. Just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, Enjoy the episode. It's a good one. Hello and welcome to SciShow Tangent, the frightfully competitive science knowledge screen case. I'm your ghost, Hank Gangreen, and joining me this week, as always, is mad scientist, Scary Riley. Eek! And our resident every wolfman, Sam Skulls. Uh, what else did they say besides a woo? I said that last week. A woo again. <laughs> the old calendar on the wall says it's Halloween time once more. And as you know, we here at SciShow Tangents love to get into the Halloween spirit. And this year's no different. October will be trick or treat month. And Sam and Sari have invited some ghoulish guests over to the Tangents Manor to join us this week. In fact, I hear one of them approaching the door now. Who is it? Hello! Why, it's our mystery guest, Lulu Miller, host of Radiolab, author of Why Fish Don't Exist, and host of Terrestrials, a kid-friendly podcast full of stories from the people who brought you Radiolab. Hello! Hello! Hello. How's it going? It's great. It's so good to see you. I I had to be spooky there for a long time, but I'm just going to sort of settle back (laughs) into normal now. Wait, I want to stay spooky. Like, why can't I be Boo Boo Miller or Ghoul Ghoul Miller? Oh, I didn't even speak of that. Or... uh, Oh, that's all I got. Lulu Killer? Boo Boo Killer. There we go. Boo Boo Killer? Yeah. Boo Boo Killer. Perfect. Well, thanks for joining us, Boo Boo. (laughs) Hey, Boo Boo. So I'm legitimately always surprised. I do not know who our special mystery guests are going to be, which makes me very nervous. But I'm very excited to see you. We've never met before. I know. This is so I'm so I'm so happy to be in in the like my safe space of pure science nerdery. It's where I want to reside. I'm I'm honored and excited to be here. It's so awesome to meet you all. Hank talks about your book all the time. Well, I gotta it's tell very you. Good. We actually <laughs> made a SciShow episode today. We just filmed it with it was a collab with the Monterey Bay Aquarium about whether or not be whether or not we're fish. And what did they say? Oh, uh, you know, that it's a lot of that that like cladistics and conversation are different things and that if you ask for a fish donkey you shouldn't expect to get a a cow in it Uh, but cows are fish (laughs) I love it so like basically conversationally no but scientifically accurately yes yeah there's no yeah there's no fish Uh, in, in terms of this particular tool which is quite useful if it seems like we're being pedantic I guess we are but like there's a useful tool here and we have to stick with it and there's there are no fish there are lots of different mm-hmm. kinds of fish, uh, and we can sort of settle on that. <laughs> Every week here on Tangents, we get together to try to unnerve, disgust, and horrify each other with science facts while also trying to stay on topic. Our panelists are playing for gory and for candy, which we'll be awarding as we play. And at the end of the episode, one of us will be crowned the King of Halloween. And if the guest is the treat of this trick-or-treat month, here is the trick. Our regular panel will take turns presenting games this month, and I get to play along for once. Now, as always, we're going to introduce this week's topic with the traditional science poem this week from Lulu. This is called, Show Me a Sadder Thing Than Elytra. (laughs) Okay. Wow. It's been beautiful already. They are a body part known to the beetle. The word itself sounds a little greek <laughs> like, <laughs> like Electra, the gal who lusted for her dad. But I promise you, Elytra is much more sad. You may know it as the little shell over the beetle's wing, but evolutionarily, it's more like a muzzle over what once could sing. Oh. Considered the cruel forces by time concealed that forced the creature's wings to harden into shield. Ooh. So depressing. I'm sorry. It's a well, sad I mean, word. I th- it's it's yes. a horrible thing. I mean, I, yeah. So it was a very good poem, but I did contain the word, I think, Greekle. It, it, yes. So Greekle was one of the words in that poem, <laughs> which is a lesser known uh, uh, version of Greek-ish. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. sure, yeah. sure. So the topic for the day is creepy crawlies, which I guess we did specifically so that we wouldn't have too much trouble defining it among, uh, <laughs> w- with a guest who knows maybe too much about taxonomy. I feel like if anyone's going to define creepy crawlies, it's going to be this group of people. We're going to draw yeah. some really hard boundaries yeah, that this is science has never seen before. Mm-hmm. Can't have a spine. 
can't have a spine. A mouse isn't a creepy crawly. That's how. I that's what I was operating under. It has to be under. an invertebrate. Yeah. 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 Has to be terrestrial. Can't you can't get creepy crawly by a lobster. Oh, I think you can you get creepy crawly by a little shrimp, though, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah a like little one of those creepy crawly marine fleas. bug. Yeah, oh, what about okay. a, like those spiders, the under the spider crabs? Are they creepy crawlies? They're too big, I think. Uh, yeah, like there's the a giant. size. There's a size, size limit. You can't be bigger than well. a fist. If it's bigger than a fist, that's not a creepy crawly. That's just that's just terrible. What's a tarantula? <laughs> is a tarantula not a creepy crawly? Uh, or like is a it scorpion, too big? a big scorpion. Uh, those are creepy crawlies. What if it's a yeah. scorpion the size of a person? Is that a creepy crawly? Is there a line? It's great. I did. I never thought about this, how the smallness is a part of it. Like it sneaks up and then it's all gnarly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because if it like makes the nor- the sound of a normal person like coming into a door, like opening the door, walking in, and you're like, that's <laughs> that is just a monster. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a that's monster. just a that's just a bear with a with an exoskeleton. Now it has yeah. to be oh. able to be it has to be able to crawl on you. Are you now? Are we including soft like slugs? You know, like an, uh, a slug snail. I think you gotta have or- legs. Oh, shoot. No. Well, I'm, well, I have to leave I think, then. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think worms can be creepy crawlies. They're Thank part of the so. Halloween, mm. uh, like, yeah. bowl of worms bowl of spaghetti. Worms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and sure. they can crawl on you without any legs. I think you got to go, ooh, when it crawls on you, too. I don't know that a mouse, that a mouse counts. So, yeah. So then, like, does a butterfly not count? Uh, yeah, because butterflies you go, uh, uh, yeah, butterflies are obviously uh, when not. It crawls <laughs> on you. <laughs> yeah, but and and no birds except for the ugly ones. Except for like a ratchet cardinal, this <laughs> is like, dirty and just a, kind of like intimidating. Yeah, yeah bir- birds can be creepy crawlies, but only if they're like really like ugh, just gross, just <laughs> off-putting like, birds. Like yeah. the babies that don't that don't have feathers yet, totally a creepy crawly. Yeah, oh, yeah that totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what about a human baby? I just, I don't know. I think if, a human baby could be pretty, pretty creepy. If a sometimes. human baby was crawling up they you. Are. Especially if it sneaks up on you. Crawl. Yeah. 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 Good. I'm glad. It, so, we've, so we've talked okay, about so we're talking about uh, slugs, spiders. Human babies. Beetles and babies and Lamp naked rays. birds. It has to yeah. be alive. Okay. Nope. It could yeah. be dead. But it has to have yeah. once been alive. <laughs> all right, so I feel like we got it all under control. Sarah, do you have any etymological wisdom to share with us before we move on? The word creepy crawly, the compound word, because it has a hyphen in between it, uh, <laughs> was first used in 1858, as far as we can tell, um, to you to refer to an insect or animal. I I disagree with the fact that it could be used for an, an animal with the spine, but mm. one time in <laughs> a book in 1923, or I assume it was a book, but I'm not sure, they referred to kangaroo babies as creepy crawlies. What? That makes oh, sense to me. Yeah, wait, sure. Wait, yeah. can we just stop and talk about kangaroo babies for a second? <laughs> That's why <what laughs> it's yeah. called tangents. Yeah. Okay, guys, is it true that like a kangaroo baby, when it is first birthed, is the size of like a beetle and crawls up the pouch uh-huh. and back in, and it's uh-huh. like a little beetle vertebrate uh-huh. mammal, uh-huh. and then mm-hmm. it hides in the pouch and like incubates and then becomes like the cute size you see in cartoons like yeah. a puppy size it is really yeah. weird that they have to get into the pouch like could you not yeah. just wait do put- we know what the beetle is it actually the size of a beetle and is it hairless like has yeah. anyone watched it i have seen crawl- it i've seen a video crawling along the hairs it's a wet I little love an eyeless like a jelly bean jelly bean wow. yeah Wow, with little legs. Yeah, it's like a Birdie Bot's every flavor bean, and the flavor is baby kangaroo. <laughs> okay, that's for sure. Okay, you know what? The flavor is I meat, go with that please. book in 1923. I think that's a creepy yeah, crawly. Yeah, that's a creepy yeah. crawly. Okay, okay. I, sure. I see it. Okay. So we, I feel like we are settled on having no idea what a creepy crawly is. That means it is time to move on to the quiz portion of our show. <laughs> Sam is going to be doing a, I think... It's weird for me to not be in charge, you guys. I'm back in the saddle again. Like four years ago was the last time I did a truth or fail, but I did my best. So uh, for anybody who doesn't know what truth or fail is, like maybe Lulu, I'm going to say three facts. One of them's real. Two of them are fake. Of all the creepy crawlies in the world, none are more lowly than the lowly worm. They're slimy. They eat nasty rot and stuff. They don't even have legs. But there are, relatively speaking, some spectacular worms out there, worthy of at least some small degree of admiration. So today, I present to you three worm superlatives, but only one of them 
is real. This is Number why you one, said you had to leave the podcast if, if yeah. worms didn't count as creepy crawlies. Yeah, I'm screwed if worms don't count. <laughs> Number one, the award for longest worm goes to the bootlace worm, a marine worm that can grow to be 100 feet long. There are even some unconfirmed reports of worms almost 200 feet long, but why you wouldn't want to pull yourself up by this bootlace. Its body is covered in <laughs> thick, toxic mucus. Number two, the award for the slimiest worm goes to the Numero worm, an annelid that produces about four times more slime than your average earthworm. The slime has an antimicrobial property that keeps it safe from parasites and may have useful medical applications for humans. It does come with a trade-off, though. The Numero worm is the slowest known worm. And number three, on the other side of that coin, the award for fastest worm goes Ooh, to the sapphire worm. worm. An annelid that, in tests, has shattered the worm land speed record by traveling about seven <laughs> inches in 90 seconds. It uses this enormous speed to dodge other predatory worms as it goes about its day eating leaf litter. Which worm <laughs> is real? The bootlace worm is the longest worm, the numero worm, the slimiest worm, or the sapphire worm, the fastest worm. I absolutely <laughs> believe that all of those worms are real worms. I think I may have even heard of all of them. The, the, (laughs) (laughs) the, the slime thing is very interesting to me because I am obsessed with slime. I have become recently obsessed with slime because I started to try and write a SciShow episode about the largest molecules and slime. Mm. It turns out, depending on how you count is almost definitely the largest uh, biological molecule because uh, it, it it's just one. It can be just one molecule. So they can form disulfide bonds, and that's so. All these proteins come together. They form disulfide b- bonds, and th- and like oh. basically, from what I can tell, though I haven't got an expert to confirm this yet, the entire inside of your intestinal tract is covered <gasps> in one molecule of slime. <gasps> What Ooh. the heck? Wait, I have a lot of slime questions now. Are, is slime, like a taxonomy of slime, I mean, is the slime in us the same, like, how? Do, what is slime? That's my question. Yeah, yeah. I what mean, I think, it, so like, there's this a class of proteins called mucins, or I think it's mucins. It may be mucins. I think it's mucins. And uh, it's and, mucins. and that's what I'm talking about when, I, when, I, when I'm talking about Sequel the slime inside minions. of us. Sequel to minions. <laughs> they're like me they're like minions but they're way worse they're just gross <laughs> yeah. Stretch. Yeah, like, like stretch armstrong minions and 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 i think that's i think that that is similar to how other i think that this is a fairly common way of creating slimy stuff like uh you know those eels that are really slimy they make they sort of excrete this these uh proteins that then bind together a lot of water and that's part of how they work really well is they they just Good a huge amount of water to gloop into it, and that's part of their um, the, the the mechanism of how the proteins become functional. Um, so, so I like that, and I bet I bet there's some slimy worms out there. But but also the the eels make me think that maybe Sam was thinking about eels, and he made up worms that were slimy. Minions can stretch. I would like to say that minions can stretch already. That. I don't, I don't know very but much about minions. But can they minions. join together and become one large, one single minion? No, they can't do that. <laughs> what do we think about fast worms? How about those, huh? There's got to be a fastest worm. There's got to be, right? There's got to be a fastest and the slowest. I don't know if that's <laughs> fast. How fa- seven inches and 90 seconds? Yeah. That feels slow. Okay, that feels that, slow. Like, when it's I a did worm. my official <laughs> test of they like... They can flail. Seven inches <laughs> and then... That just feels like I've seen a worm go faster than that in 90 seconds. And like swimming worms? <laughs> yeah. They must this go. is a land well, this worm. Is the, this is specifically oh, this a land, is land, worm. land speed land record speed. for a worm. I see, I see. Yeah. It's the cheetah of worms. Yes, <laughs> it is. The bootlace was convincing because of the unconfirmed 200. Like that felt mm. very human, real, unconfirmed, trying to reach for a bigger superlative. The, what threw me off was like the generally toxic like toxic to whom and i just i'm going with slime slime's my guess too okay, slimiest slime. i'm gonna go with the bootlace worm because i think it would be cool if it existed because it just seems too long to be <laughs> real i'm going with the bootlace worm because it is the correct fact 
<gasps> oh, oh no. Hang. <laughs> <laughs> you think I don't you know both? what the longest worm is? Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, okay. So the bootlace worm is real. And with a scientific name like Linus Longissimus. You know this fool's long. <laughs> this is long line. <laughs> yeah. So while they do usually only grow to be 5 to 10 millimeters, there are some specimens that are definitely about 100 feet long. The longer examples of bootlace worms, like the 180-foot worm reported in Scotland in 1864, have drawn a little bit of scrutiny because this worm is extremely stretchy and could easily be stretched by oh, external forces. Oh, is it long past. or were we having a good time? <laughs> I think they think the hundred foot worm did get that way by itself, unless like two sea okay. turtles grabbed on each end and went. Ring. I don't know. <laughs> they were on a romantic date, a, a stray and a, and a, and a well kept one. And they have a sticky uh, hands of the sea. Someone was whipping it around, and slapping it on rocks. <laughs> yeah, uh, but if if the worms can get that long, they aren't just the longest worm; they are the longest animal. Period, and they produce a thick, toxic slime yeah, that wow. allegedly smells like sewage and can kill crabs so pretty Whoa. pretty weird little guys um, what do they Whoa. do with all their lengths what do they do they strangle do they just like try to not be incredibly vulnerable <laughs> right <laughs> like a giant good, huh? sub just open for and you said they're marine yeah they're marine okay yeah i do not know what they do with all their lengths you know i have a guess and i i don't I don't know if this is real, but my guess is that bootlace worms get long because it just happens to happen. It's <laughs> yeah, just what happens when they succeed and they just get longer and yeah. longer and longer until somebody chumps them up. That sounds right. So the slimy Numera worm isn't real. In fact, the name Numera is the Japanese name of the Pokemon Gumi, who is a slimy little Pokemon. <laughs> wow, I was wrong. I hadn't heard of that worm. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you played Pokemon in Japan. <laughs> maybe that's uh, what it's sort, of, <laughs> sort of hard to search what the actual slimiest creature on Earth is because the hagfish really dominates any slime based yeah, searches that you might try to of. do. Yeah, yeah. But mm -hmm. it's probably hagfish. They're probably the slimiest creature. I don't know what the slimiest worm is. Uh, eels have slime that protect them from various microbial invaders and it like protects wounds, but I'm not sure if it has medical uses. And I found also in an article that said that slimier snails are slower. Should you find yourself betting on snail races, you should bet on the least slimy Look snail. For the, oh. for the driest oh. snail. <laughs> Just for the driest. Good to know. So, so that's why I said he was the slowest of all of all worms. Finally, the okay. sapphire worm was named after the sapphire computer virus, which spread in 2003 and seems to be the fastest spreading computer virus of all time. Oh. So the speed statistic of seven inches every 90 seconds is the speed of a particularly fast leopard slug documented by a worm. <laughs> Uh, by like snail and slug scientists from Carnegie Museum of Natural History, who said that the real fastest snail or slug was what I was looking for was one that went up in the space shuttle. So, uh, yeah, but dunked. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> there was no real answer really. <laughs> There's got to uh, be a so fastest snail or slug, and I think that we should do that work as a, as a species. Dude, well, this yeah, guy is doing bracket. this work. He showed okay. off his little slug racetrack, and he was like, the fastest one I found goes seven inches every 90 seconds. How do you make a slug go fast? Like, you, Dry you it can't, out, apparently. You can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't tell who's, which is the fastest slug because you can't tell them to race. Like Maybe one of them is just walking more slowly because they want to take their time that day. So you maybe have to give them can. something, some motivation. Just a little you know, slug attack dog. It's well, like we'll a get, slug, but it has little teeth. Yeah, and, we'll get um, that guy on next week and we'll ask him. Says wolf. Okay, that sounds good, <laughs> that sounds good. Next, we're going to take a short break and then Sari has another devious game for us. Welcome back, everybody. We're tied at three, except for Lulu, who has nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you're tied we're, at one, right? We're tied at one. Oh, we're tied at one. We're tied at one. All three of us are tied, except for Lulu, who has nothing. <laughs> and Sari has a game for us. Sari, what, what are we going to do? What are we about to do? I made up a game. It's uh, hopefully pretty simple. Uh, the game is called Mate, Murder, or Mislead. Uh, <laughs> I had... 
other options fornicate fight or flee copulate consume or camouflage but the m's the m's really won it uh, and the premise of the game is pretty straightforward I will so ryan gosling G- ryan seacrest yeah. and ryan Adams. <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe inspired by another game but this one's sciency so i'll present you with a creepy crawly body part or behavior and you tell uh-huh. me whether it's mainly for mating which is sexual reproduction, murdering, uh, aka catching prey or otherwise eating nutrients, or okay. misleading, which I'm considering it. any anti predator adaptation to keep them from being eaten. God, Here's, how I the love scoring- it. Yeah. I love it. Here's how the scoring works if you get it right, you get a point. If you get it wrong, you get no points. And if all of three of you get it wrong, I get three points. Uh, so Ooh. one strategy would be to divide your votes and I'll get no points this whole time and I can't stop you, but I have a feeling that won't happen. <laughs> I'm basing this off of another board game that I've played. <laughs> points are the hardest part of games. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Ready. Number one, railroad worms got their name because they have 11 pairs of dorsolateral lanterns along their body segments that glow a yellowish color thanks to bioluminescence. In other words, they look like little train cars with glowing windows. Wow. Scientists think these lateral <laughs> lanterns are for mating, murdering, or misleading. Oh. Oh. I'm going to guess it's for murdering because you're drawing things to you with light, I believe. I think it's mating. I think that it's like a deep sea vibe and it's hard to find mm. mates down there. So you got to glow. Yeah, like a like a deep sea firefly. Like, do do look at me. But yeah. here's my question. For mating, meaning like it's the business, it's like a private part or it just it helps you mate? So I'm considering it like mostly used for some something to do with mating. So like researchers look at it and say those lights are... Help sex you. related help you in some way not aren't attractive necessarily like okay. the inserting part but like <laughs> okay are okay. the attractive bit i think i'm going mate too i'm going mate okay the answer is misleading oh um, which I thought was Sorry. surprising <laughs> uh, so railroad worms are the larval form of multiple genera of brazilian beetles um, oh. and both the larval forms and the adult forms maintain these light organs and glow to some capacity they use luciferin and luciferase like fireflies to do their bioluminescing and they have lanterns on their heads and their sides and researchers think the ones on their heads help them see in the dark, but the lateral lanterns seem to be for self-defense because they only flash them um, pretty much when they're surprised and a sudden flash can repel potential predators. So Whoa. not only, yes, it can draw attention to you. It's like a you. taser. It's like bear spray. <laughs> like, kind of. Bear like, sp- it's like, bah! But like a, more like a security light, like an on yeah. the outside yeah. of your house. Yeah. Yeah. Where it like, okay, so like all blinds. of a sudden goes. Yeah. Like, Whoa. And it's just on the larva. Like the, the adults don't have, it's just when you're a little vulnerable larva. I think people. the larva light up more often, but the adult okay. forms also have it along their sides. And uh, adult females also seem to glow while protecting their eggs. And so that's why they think it has something to do with defense too. Something about it's a classic, these like multiple it's a classic lights. maternal glow. You yeah, get, you know, it just happens. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, that is so cool. Is I love that. Cool. Fact. I've never heard about that. That's so cool. Number two, velvet worms are also not taxonomically worms, so to speak. They are in a loose group called panarthropods and are sort of cousins to arthropods and tardigrades with their many feet and soft, wiggly bodies. They have oral papillae, one on each side of their head, that wildly spew out a protein-rich slime. Are those slime jets mostly for mating, murdering, or misleading? Mm. There's got to be murder slime jets. I think it's murder <laughs> slime jets, too. I want them to be boom-boom slime. <laughs> like I want them to be. Uh, uh, so I'm going to go with that. That'll be my guess. We're all going all right. with murder? No, I'm going. No, no, I'm mating. going mating. Boom, boom, yeah. oh, boom, boom, please, boom, boom. I didn't boom, understand Hank. what boom, boom was. Boom, chicky, boom, chicky, boom, boom, chicky, wow, wow. <laughs> boom, boom, sorry, to Hank sorry. is murder. Let me translate. Let me translate. Yeah. Boom, chicky, wow, wow, Jess. Uh-huh. <laughs> what is it, Terry? It is uh, for murdering. So yes. most of the videos studied show this slime as an t- attack against prey, such as beetles or uh, spiders or crickets. They store the slime in a reservoir. 
uh, in their bodies and then squeeze it out at estimated speeds of around 8.6 meters per second or 19.2 miles per hour. And they don't actually point their papillae. Uh, they just push the fluid through it so fast that it waves about wildly, kind of like a garden hose. Oh, so wow. they just spray slime kind of uh-huh. willy nilly. And then this, as it, it gets sprayed as a liquid, but as it settles onto the prey, uh, it becomes a stickier or stiffer polymer thread kind of closer to a spider web. So as the, the beetle or spider wiggles around, the, the slime stiffens up and I love this. Uh, then they then they eat whatever they want to eat. Oh yeah, that's wow. great. That's so it's, just, it's just encased in the slime. Yeah, it's wow. caught in the slime like a little like a little net. What if what if that uh, was people? What if that was people? I know. <laughs> like there's nothing that says that that like that wouldn't have been one of our strategies at like a primate right. strategy for success, and then we end up becoming a sentient slime shooter. And according to Hank, we've got the we've got the slime in the intestine. We can make you it. Know? Yeah, you could, so you could ex- if you could excrete it in there, you can excrete it anywhere. That's what I always say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Number 3. House centipedes feel like the platonic ideal of creepy crawly with their 30ish long and gangly legs that radiate out from their bodies. One Very behavior creepy. they do with their super long back legs, which are really flexible and segmented, is called lassoing. Are there leg lassos for mating? Murdering or misleading? Mm, I think they're boom boom lassos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna guess murder again. I don't know. It just that just feels right to me. Wait, so their legs are lassos? Like they can like? What does that mean? Their back legs are really long. All of their legs are really long. How such beats are like gangly, but their back legs are especially flexible and segmented and do something called lassoing. So, okay, I'm taking it back. It's mating. It's mating. Yeah, I'm, I'm going. I'm going mating. I'm just staking on my, oh, my mating three, guess here. 100 percent boom boom. 100 percent boom boom and zero percent correct. No! Uh, it is in fact for Murder? murdering. Yeah, oh. they have uh, one researcher Oof. called arthropod Swiss Army knives, which I thought was very funny. And so, like centipedes have a lot of different legs that are differentiated for different things. So, for example, they have some specialized legs that act as as fangs, but these leg lassos. Uh, are used to rope around prey and restrain them, sometimes multiple at a time, so it can eat one and have one caught for a snack for later. House centipedes uh, feed on cockroach nymphs, flies, moths, bedbugs, crickets, silverfish, earwigs, oh, and I hate all, uh, of those all kinds of pests. Yeah, so yeah, even yeah. though we think of house centipedes as a creepy crawly, a lot of the, the pest websites are like, don't kill it because uh. they eat. Things that you like less. They are terrifying. Here's the thing. You could, if, if, if it doesn't have any food, it'll die on its own. If it does have food, that's a bunch of things in your house that you don't want. Well, do you want me to give you an impromptu, creepy, crawly, gross out fact? Yeah, that sure. related to cockroach nymphs yes. while we're on the topic. Do you know what I did on Friday? Oh, no. <laughs> I know. I wasn't there. Uh, did you eat something weird? Did you mm-hmm. find? You ate something so, weird? So, um, turns out, Again, this room probably knows it, but it was news to me about a month ago. There is a species of cockroach that does not lay eggs, but gives live birth to babies. And as part of that, creates milk. (gasps) Uh, Cockroach milk has been analyzed and is believed to be one of the most nutritious milks on the planet. It has all nine amino acids. It's not, it has um, calories, it has proteins, it has omega fatty oils. It's not (gasps) lactose based. So it could, in theory, be a nice form of milk for the lactose intolerant among us. So, uh, uh, yeah, what did I drink? You drank on Friday. Oh, how much? How much can you get? I got a small vial uh, along with a guest uh, entomologist, Dr. Sammy Ramsey, who told me about it. Who's been who's heard about it for ten years and has always wow. wanted to try it because he wow. eats all the bugs. Um, and and uh, and we did a taste test and we <gasps> guess we had cow milk, cow milk, and goat milk and road. Oat milk and roach milk, and I had to guess, and it was very clear. <laughs> it, was not, it was not tricky. <laughs> it was really disgusting. It tasted like acrid. Um, I think in the moment I called it the broken dreams of sunshine. Like it was, it was, it was sparkle. Got, it was like so bad. Um, anyway, but there are there are people looking into whether we could bottle it. For a for a more sustainable oh future. So. Well, I don't keep your eyes out on the milk aisle. 
If it, uh, I assume she's with the idea. Well, have you ever had a jelly bean though? I mean, you've eaten a bug secretion. Yep. No, sure. no, 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 no. I could, I, I'm basing this on what, if you thought that it tasted like sunshine and rainbows, I would be excited <laughs> about the possibilities. But if, yeah. it tastes, if it tastes like garbage, I've smelled the inside of a cockroach before it's bad in there. It's not good. It's yeah. bad in there. It well, so they haven't, this was just like straight from the lab. I mean, this was like not treated. <laughs> this was not like the company with like a cute name adding sugar. Like this was just like, I basically <laughs> nursed a cockroach. Oh, from the cockroach um, but I boiled it. But anyway, so should I go? Like, if, did I achieve the creepy crowd? You that do feel bad. ill? That was, have I, yeah, have that I done Halloween thing. right yeah. for you? Yeah. <laughs> I kind of want to taste it too, though. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's definitely I'll worse. see what I can arrange. I know a guy. I know okay. a guy. I gotta hook up in Omaha. Get me a vial. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you my address. <laughs> I'd also like to note that I have zero points in any game so far. <laughs> Maybe this will be the one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so bark lice are tiny brown insects that feed on small debris like fungi or poop or whatnot. And the Neotrogla genus are found in Brazilian caves where they use barbed appendages called gynosomes to go about their lives. Are these gynosome barbs for mating, murdering, or misleading? I feel like the name gynosomes. gynosomes. Yeah, you're trying to fake us out with the gyno. <laughs> are they I very got- big or are they gynosomes? Like, are they giant or are they gyna? This is the question. I can give you the spelling if you want. Well, yeah, it's in yeah. The show What's flow. the? Yeah, can you can G-Y-N-O you use it in a sentence? G-Y-N-O-S-O-M-E. Oh, well, it's it's a it's a mating. boom boom. She's tricking us, but it's mating. <laughs> Barbed miss. Hold on, guys. I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing wherever I go is going to be wrong. So don't follow me here. But where I'm going is murder. A Lulu. It's oh, boom, boom. No. <laughs> boom, boom. It was just obvious. Was, there was no I've been waiting out. for you. Yeah, there's over, no fake just, out. Oh, you, this was literally the easy. This was the softball. Okay. <laughs> I, thought you were, I thought you were head faking. You were getting over. You were guessing it. meaning I mean, every time. But yeah, that's this is oh, what I was betting on on this gesture. game. Yeah. I appreciate your <laughs> is, is that you would over everyone would overthink this. But all four species of the Neotrogla genus of Barklaus have opposite structured sexual organs. So the females have a gynosome that gets erect and has barbs to stab into the male's cavity which is very Ooh. weird yeah uh, they have sex that lasts up to 70 hours which is probably Ooh. why the barb oh, exists wow. so that they can just like stay Hold interlocked <laughs> uh-huh. and the gynosome uh sucks up and transfers the semen so it's kind of like a straw rather than a squirt gun <laughs> wow. and oh. this is like very that- weird and the only time we found it among I mean, animals. it doesn't suck it up very quickly. It, cool it seems like it might be fairly yeah. fa- passive if it takes 70 I hours. I gotta work on that. That's a thick milkshake right there. <laughs> oh, God. Thicker than the cockroach milk, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Lulu Miller, thank you so much for spending some time with us on this episode of SciShow Tangents. We started a little late, and Lulu has to go pick up her kids. So we're going to do the science catch without you. <laughs> How will we ever, okay. how will we ever learn? But I'm so glad to know I, that you have put the grossest thing in your mouth. I am, I'm happy to come here and, and provide that, uh, those factoids and no correct answers. Um, <laughs> you guys are the best. If you are into bugs, we have this brand new series that's called Terrestrials. It's all about the strangeness right here on Earth. I think it's spiritually aligned to what y'all are doing, which totally. is looking at mm-hmm. creatures and showing that the, that, that they often work in ways you don't believe nature is supposed to work and that we don't need to look up to the stars or to aliens to find kind of wonder here. And uh, um, I think it's the most fun I've ever had making something. Um, So I'd love if you check it out, even if you aren't a kid or aren't a parent, my secret hope is that like a adult would like it too, just a fun adult or a a (laughs) adult, like a sad adult who needs to be cheered up, like just needs to go on a walk with their geeky nature friend. Uh, I'm I'm here to provide that service. I'm both of them too. Yeah, adults and adults, welcome. (laughs) Have fun on the couch. I'll miss you. I'm there in spirit. And Lulu's going to be back for the butt fact, so stay tuned. Final candy count. Sam has three. I have three. Lulu has none. And Sari has seven. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sari's like designing the, the games game. as a leg yeah. up. It's hard not to make a game where you crush everybody. <laughs> <laughs> And now it is time to ask the science couch where we got a, uh, some listener questions for our couch of finely honed scientific minds. Sam, what is our question? Vita Bjornin on Discord asks, I used to hear that the brown recluse had a potent venom. Then I heard that it's actually a staph infection that does the majority of the damage in the things it bites. What's the truth? 
I've always wondered about this too because it seems like spiders can f you up, but I don't know if they're effing you up or if something else is effing you up. As someone who thinks about spiders all the time, I've heard conflicting reports. I don't actually know the answer to this question, but but it does seem like the like uh, from what I've seen of brown recluse bites, they last for a very long time, which it feels more like an infection than a venom to me. Sari, do you know the answer? I do. In fact, I researched it just for this very podcast. (laughs) Uh, I'm not a secret spider expert. So brown recluse spiders do have a toxin, um, and it has a bunch of different stuff in it. Uh, A lot of proteases, which are enzymes that attack proteins or break them down. Um, And when they bite human skin, it causes cell death. It's called dermonecrotic arachnidism. So when brown recluse spiders bite humans, you do get like a a puncture wound and then reddish and pus and whatnot. It hurts sometimes if the toxin, if enough toxin got in you, it can get like a little bit worse. Like your skin can slough off or the the wound will get uglier. But the thing is, brown recluse spiders, as toxic as they are, are only found in certain regions of the United States, mostly in the South west and midwest mostly in dark areas like under rocks bark of dead trees basements whatnot and they don't feed on humans uh they don't feed on blood at all and so really the only time that they would bite you is if they were like in your bed for some reason and you rolled over and they were very scared and then they went wow i'm gonna bite to try and defend myself Mm -hmm. so a lot of doctors Uh, who are not spider experts or people who are just looking at their skin and being like, oh, I have like a red swollen thing on my arm. Must be a spider because we don't like spiders uh, socially. They're they're categorized as creepy crawlies, (laughs) even though they're just fine. That's where the idea of staph comes in. It's not like the staphylococcus bacteria. It's not getting in through the spider bite. You just got bacteria in a cut or something. And that led to a skin infection. But all kinds of things like skin cancer, ulcers, Uh, can all be misdiagnosed as spider bites because if you don't bring in the spider and if you don't have an entomologist or someone who is really familiar with spider bites looking at the wound uh, and you can see the the fang marks, then it's probably some other skin condition. And so there's all these articles online of like, if someone says it's a spider bite or if if you Google something and the Google result says it's a spider bite, maybe think about questioning that because you might have something else that uh, needs treatment in some way. Well, if you want to ask the Science Couch your questions, you can follow us on Twitter at SciShowTangents, where we'll tweet out topics for upcoming episodes every week. Or you can join the SciShowTangents Patreon and ask us on Discord. Thank you to at Gencar, at Boy with Headache, and everybody else who asked us your questions for this episode. If you like this show and you want to help us out, it's super easy to do that. First, you can go to patreon.com slash SciShowTangents to become a patron and get access to things like our newsletter and our very weird bonus ep- episodes. And also, we have a tier where you can get a special in-episode shout-out, which is the tier that patron John Pollock has subscribed at. Thank you to John. Thanks, John. Second, you can leave us a review wherever you listen. That helps people know what you like about the show and helps us know as well. And finally, if you want to show your love for SciShow Tangents, just tell people tell about people us. Tell people about us. Thank you for joining us. I've been Hank Green. I've been Sari Riley. And I've been Sam Schultz. SciShow Tangents is created by all of us and produced by Sam Schultz. Our editor is Seth Glixman. Our story editor is Alex Billo. Our social media organizer is Julia Buzz Bazayo. Our editorial assistant is Tabuki Trakravarti. Our sound design is by Joseph Moonamedish. Our executive producers are Caitlin Hoffmeister and me, Hank Green. And of course, we couldn't make any of this without our putrid patrons on Patreon. Thank you. And remember, the mind is not a coffin to be filled but a jack-o'-lantern to be lighted. But one more thing. (laughs) What you guys don't know (laughs) is that at Radiolab, people torment me. I hate talking about farts um, and people oh, oh torment no. me like all day long it's like let's do an episode about farts and it's like i cannot escape it. and then so the one that you chose <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay so here we go creepy crawly insects eat and poop like a lot of animals
And depending on what they eat and their gut microbes, they can toot as well. <laughs> Some bugs, all right, I'll just say fart. They can fart too. Some bugs release fart gases like, hey, this. <laughs> like hydrogen and methane through holes in their exoskeleton called spiracles. But we have evidence that... <laughs> Some fart directly from their butts, too. Fossilized flatulence. There are lots of fossilized insects in amber, but a handful of them showcase creatures like ants, cockroaches, beetles, and termites caught mid-fart in their untimely oh, deaths with a distinctive bubble emerging from their anus. How humiliating for them. <laughs> I don't know. If I want to be remembered for anything, and I'm an ant. Yeah, Because at least true. like you're a little bit exceptional at that point. Most ants don't yeah. get their farts fossilized with them. It's like, was it Edison's last breath was like caught in the bottle? And it's like maybe the soul <laughs> escaped. Yeah. Uh-huh. Exactly. And is caught in the amber. Yes. We have to figure out how to capture my last fart, you guys. Oh, okay, yeah. We're on it. That's the whole direction <laughs> we'll of the it. company now. 